yo, yo, dog, there's a little pea hitting you up with life in the streets. You want to have an apple orchard? You ain't no millionaire. You need to steal that motherfucker. We're going to be going through the woods here. I'm going to show you how to steal your motherfucking apple orchard, yo. See, this is a thug's life. We're going to be taking one tree by tree. So we're here in this, this forest, and we're going to be finding the trees. Here we got one right here. This is this is a tree. This is an apple tree. I think this is Macintosh. And we're just going to take this motherfucker right here. Man, she has a motherfucking telephone pole. No, no, this, this is a Granny Smith right here. Shit, dude, it's a cop. Let's get out of here. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. If you're like me, it could be snowing and sleeting outside in the middle of the winter and you're still thinking about growing season, what you want to plant for the coming spring, and I'm definitely in that mood today. As you can see out the window, that's exactly the weather we have today. We just had a huge ice storm, but I want to start prepping for my orchard at the next homestead that we're building. An orchard is a wonderful way of doing gardening. Uh, you know, if you're planting apples or pears or peaches or anything like that, we're going to be doing peaches today. But if you're planting any of those things, you have the uh, ability to get a lot of food from that without really putting in a lot of work once the orchard kind of gets a established. I know there's all sorts of things you can do with, you know, pests and trying to keep the pests away from it, but having done gardening of both an orchard and like, you know, tomatoes in, in a garden where you really have to do weeding around them and everything, orchards very frequently give you a lot of food without much work. And I like, I like that approach because it, it frees up my time for doing other sorts of things. So like I said, we're going to be doing peaches today. And the way that we're going to be doing it uh, is a way that's going to save me a lot of money because, you know, if you go to a garden center and you buy tomato seeds, you get several dozen seeds in a package. Maybe each seed costs a few pennies. But if you want to buy, you know, a peach tree, A peach tree could be, you know, $25 up to $50 or maybe even more depending on what size and what variety you get. Uh, so I wanted to circumvent that. I bought some peach trees at my last place. They were heirloom peaches and what that means is that the seeds from all those peaches are viable. If you buy uh, some kind of a hybrid uh, of any kind of a plant and you collect the seeds off that, there's no guarantee that you, those seeds are A, going to be able to grow anything. They may just be dead seeds. Or B, if they do grow something, it may not have the same characteristics of whatever the original plant was uh, that you, know, you bought from the store. So I always buy things in terms of them being heirloom seeds because you know while there are benefits to there being uh, hybridized plants, I love the idea that this is just regenerative. It can just kind of go on its own and you don't have to depend on a store to get new seeds every year. All these uh, seeds I've had soaking overnight. Uh, they are in uh, just some water and give them a little boost before they start germinating in the soil. I always like to do that. The uh, uh, planters that we're going to be using are not uh, something I bought specifically for planting anything. Again, along the lines of saving money. It's just some old yogurt containers and uh, I've taken them, I've put in some holes in the bottom and the way that I did that is I used a wood burning tool and I just heated it up and and pop oh, three holes in the bottom and just kind of pushing it through. If you do that, you know, you don't want to breathe in a lot of the vapor because you're going to be getting, you know, burning plastic, uh, you know, up in the air. And also, be really careful with your fingers because if you ever get burning plastic on you, it keeps burning for a while. It has all, all that thermal mass and it'll burn you for a bit. Uh, so, as you can see behind me, River is pre-filling all of these containers about halfway. How are you doing, River? Good. Okay. Uh, once he gets them about halfway, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take one of these seeds and put them in each one of these containers. And I've got as many containers as I can fit on this tr uh, tray, but uh, with all the seeds I've got here, I, I, I could eat some more yogurt, to be honest. I, I, I got to catch up on my yogurt eating so I can have some more containers. Obviously, they could be any kind of container, but I just love beautiful order and consistency. <laughs> Them all to be the same. So, uh, you know, I, I guess we're, we're going to do what we have here, and then when we catch up, we're going to do the rest of these guys. But I, I'm, I, I only mention that because oftentimes when you do planting, you'll take a couple of seeds and put them in a container. Like if you're doing tomatoes, you sprinkle a couple seeds into each little uh, seed starter, and then when they germinate, you'll clip the ones that are not as strong or not as tall, and you'll keep the strongest ones. I'm not going to do that with these. I'm just going to put one seed per container, and, uh, you know, then just... Uh, 
start taking care of them, keep them in a warm place, I expose them to sun, even though it's kind of winter, and I'm hoping that we'll start getting some of these to germinate, and then when we get to the homestead, I can start planting some really inexpensive peach trees, and instead of spending, I don't know, if you're getting two per hundred, if I'm going to get 20 trees, that's like a thousand dollars right there, if they were 50 bucks a tree, instead of spending a thousand dollars, it's just some used yogurt containers, some used peach pits, and time. Honestly, it takes a little bit of time. These guys are going to be like maybe four years behind the other one. So I won't really get my full grown trees for another four years, but I save a thousand dollars and that's a lot of money. That's it. If you guys have any interest in growing your own orchard, I highly recommend this method of just starting from seed. But if you were doing apple trees, that won't work because that's not the way apples work. Uh, you can grab a seed from an apple and if you grow it, it will grow some sort of an apple tree. But if you have a Granny Smith apple and you plant a Granny Smith apple seed, it's not going to grow a Granny Smith apple tree. Same for, you know, Honeycrisp or Gala or Fuji or any of the other varieties. The apples are not a species. Apples are kind of like the individual. So it's like if I have a kid, it's not a carbon copy of myself, uh, it is, you know, river here. So apples are kind of the same way. When you take the seed from the apple, it doesn't grow another Granny Smith because the apple is praxix. It is the individual. It's not actually a species. So you, what, the only way to really propagate uh, apples, if you're going to do that, is to grow, well, I guess you could grow an apple tree, and then you have to, you have to graft on the special varieties that you want. So if you like Honeycrisp apples, or Galas, or Fujis, or anything like that, you can graft, graft them onto a pre-existing apple tree, which I guess you could grow from seed. But you have to do that critical grafting step if you want to get the specific properties of whatever apple variety you like. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.